Hi everyone and welcome back to the Colour Cave where we like to play with our stuff. My name is Gem and I have an Upcrate unboxing video for you today. This is the monthly art subscription box from Germany. We're going to get stuck into this in just a second. I will be putting out an update video um, probably a couple of days after this because I've got some stuff to talk about. I've got some news for you which is nice so you can look forward to that and I will get you caught up in all the goings on coming up in the cave in the coming weeks. So for those of you that are new here or are unfamiliar with these boxes, welcome. And in here is a selection of art supplies that are supposed to work well together. And the idea is that we create something with those supplies with the prompt that's provided in the box. There's also a digital magazine that give us hints, tips and tricks to help us along our way. And just a little bit of inspiration if that's what you need. Um, so this is Upcrate 55. This is obviously the March box. The key to artistic heaven. What a cute sticker. Love the green as well. The first thing I like to do is I always like to look at the surface to see what we've got to give us a, a, give us a clue. Ah, there's a lot of paper in here. We have been getting a lot of pads of paper recently and I find it interesting that this paper is loose. This is textured on one side. You can see it's a slightly off-white colour. Um, it's textured on one side and it's a lot smoother on the other side. I want to say 250 GSM, but I think it might be less than that. Oh, ooh. What is this? So here is our featured artist, Julian Schle Schleffer. They've obviously used the textured side of the paper if they've used the paper that's in the box. This looks... I want to say like a water-soluble pen. Maybe something like the Karen brush markers because they're, you know, you can see there's bleed there. This has been used with water. Um, they might not even be marketed as water soil, but that that's a really nice piece. I like the colour scheme as well. I'm really into this sort of dark yellow stroke ochre colour. Um, I have this colour to complement my dark green bedroom, so it's a favourite of mine. Okay, uh, so Julianne, freelance concept artist and illustrator specialising in character design. Awesome, really cool. And if we open this up, we can see some more of um, of their work there. And here is the code that we scan, a QR code, to take us to the magazine. So we'll look at that in just a wee second. And we've got some stickers here. These are so cool. I really like this sort of stylized, like almost blocky design. That's very cool indeed. Okay, let's see what's going on in here. <laughs> Oh, uh, okay, we've got Ecoline brush pens. So I was kind of half right with my, my guess. Um, these little markers, we've had these before. I, I really like the colour scheme. We've got flesh tones here, so we might be sort of edging towards either animals or people with these kind of colours. Uh, that might give us a hint with the prompt. Um, these are lovely. The only ones that I was disappointed with was the pastel set. The colours were really, really desaturated and didn't matter how much you built them up, they were still really delicate. So I felt that was quite a limited colour set to have. Um, but stuff like this, uh, the brush on these is absolutely lovely. So this one is called Mahogany. These are indeed soluble in water. Look, so nice, so, so nice. There's very little smell off these markers as well. I am glad we have these and we've got this set of five here. So we'll take a quick look at the colours. We will test them out in just a bit. Um, but we've got grey and this one is pink beige. And we have pastel red and this yellow ochre colour, which is my favourite. Talons seem to be everywhere just now. Have you all noticed that? Like there's, there's just talons stuff everywhere. I've got a, a tube of acrylic paint. So this is the Van Gogh range. And this th this range of paint's really good. And this is Azo Yellow Light paint. So that's interesting. They haven't given us a paintbrush though. Not the end of the world. We've got plenty of those here at the cave. Oh no. <laughs> it's been ages since Upcrate have done this, but they are very guilty of this, of just flinging in a random marker. And it usually doesn't go with anything. At least this one is black. Uh, this is going to have a massive chisel nib on it. Oh my god. <laughs> right, okay. The complaint I have about this is, uh, you know, I, I would use a marker this size occasionally, but for, you know, in relation to the paper, there's going to be limited uses for that unless you want to block out the whole page and start with a black background, which um, if we had other supplies wouldn't be a bad idea at all. Um, this is an acrylic paint marker, so we have to prime this one. You can see there's no paint on that. That nib is um, is fresh. 
so we'll do that as well that might give us some really interesting block parts depending on what the prompt is and here it's got a wee bulk bearing in it and that's to help mix the paint last and certainly not least is a pigma micron i have a plethora of these i use these quite a lot um, and this is a 10 so this is quite a big nib that's on this um I'm, yeah probably better showing you against the white of the paper so it's quite a thick fine liner if that makes sense the numbers on the micron markers is just there it's like an arbitrary numbering system it doesn't relate to the nib size but it does tell you on it a, a 0 0.6 millimeter line so in terms of fine liners that's quite fat with the microns i favor the other end of the scale i use the wee teeny teeny tiny ones um the smallest they do as far as i know is a zero zero three and it's like a non-existent line width but it's my favorite because i like things like that so happy to have one of these really reliable archival once they're dry properly and um, waterproof all that kind of stuff so that is excellent technically these brush pens might go over the top of the acrylic paint they might not i think you would have to go background with these as well Test this out though. Um, I just, just what an odd combination. Okay, I'm not mad, but um, yeah, I'm just a little bit like well, apprehensive. That's the word. We'll scan our code. Okay, so let's see if I can get zoomed in enough for you to be able to see what's going on without any glare. Okay, that's pretty good. Right, okay, so we're starting off with the actual supplies. So the the Ecoline brush pens, Frau Holle, Holle, Holle set. Dusky pink, mustard yellow, brown red. The trend colours from Frau, Frau Hula Studio, goodness me, which has become famous for its lettering workshops and products. Together with a soft, light pink and medium grey, endless colour combinations can be created. Well, not endless, but a lot. All of which are harmonious and timeless. Harmonious, yes, I agree with that. I think that's a lovely palette to have. The brush pen impresses with its flexible tip. I do like it. Large selection of brilliant colours thanks to its pure dye-based formula. For best results, use the transparent colours on white or very light paper. So this is going back to what I was saying about having the acrylic paint. Um, th they are very transparent. You're not going to be able to put that down over black, that's for sure. If you wish, you can easily reduce the intensity of the colours by diluting them with water or using the brush pen and blender, which is sewed separately. These pens are perfect for hand lettering, watercolour drawings, quick sketches and colour accents. So it tells you about the colours there. And it's talking about wet on wet techniques. Recommended retail price, 15 euros. The Amsterdam Acrylic Marker. Very opaque with excellent light fastness. Three pluses. Acrylic markers are a simple solution to create clear lines and add final touches to your acrylic painting. Well, see, that's that's fine, but um, they're going to be quite... You, you can use the edge of the marker, but it's chonky. Made with high-quality, light-fast pigments, odourless, water-based formula, 46 colours, three different sizes. Yeah, we, we've had the smaller ones of these before, and the Amsterdam ones. Easy to use and adheres to virtually any slightly porous surface um, and it lists all the normal things. Proudly crafted in Europe. Um, yeah, that's one thing I will say. I, I, I like acrylic pens. My favourite ones are the Molotov ones, but I do use a lot of Posca's and they're pretty versatile. They stick to almost anything and you can use them on glass as well. Um, you would, would have to seal them though. Big my Micron. Waterproof permanent fine liners that are loyally used by designers, scientists. I used to use them when uh, when I was doing my degree as well in the sciencey stuff, so yes. Fine nib makes this pen ideal for creating technical and artistic drawings. Protective metal sleeve around the tip to give extra control and, con and increased resilience when using with drawing aids such as rulers. That was one of the main things that I used it for um, doing sciencey stuff. I drew a lot of tables by hand. Does not smear, feather or bleed through on most paper permanent archival quality ink waterproof and fade resistant recommended retail price 2.95 euros okay and here is the acrylic azo yellow van gogh acrylic color is made with high quality pigments under superior dutch quality standards this student artist grade acrylic paint yeah it kind of touts itself as a you know as a sort of middle of the road and uh, i've used quite a lot of the van gogh paints and i've always found them very very agreeable indeed the heavy body paint has high pigment load for strong intense colours for working with artist paint, brush or palette knife. Uh, acrylic colour is available in 40 colours and this is obviously a big tube, a 40ml tube. And has a, a double plus light fast rating. And that's recommended retail price of €3. Euros. And this is the thing, like acrylic paint is so cheap and I don't understand why more people aren't into it. Um, it's really forgiving if you make mistakes you can paint over the top of it because most of your colours are really really opaque and it's so cheap like acrylic paint is cheap yeah <laughs> 
And here we have the the watercolour paper. It's 300 GSM. Okay, so I was miles off. Uh, this is watercolour paper. Like the deck of a ship, the 300 GSM thick paper does not buckle if you work with multiple layers or wet on wet techniques. Cold press has a rough and a smooth side, which offers best surface for your art, depending on your preference. I've developed this thing. I've always enjoyed texture and I've always liked rougher paper um, but that's for pencil see when it comes to paint because i've been painting in gouache a lot recently um, i am actually favoring smoother paper and i've started using a lot more hot press paper so chances are i would probably go with the smooth side particularly for things like this marker because it'll just go down better but you can get some really interesting textures and things obviously if you use the knobbly bobbly side so here is the artist of the month and here is the artwork and a little interview with them. Tell us what a day in your life looks like if you're not making art. That's an interesting question. And here is the video. Um, I think the this looks like bottles in the video. So I think that must be for past it, this picture here. So yeah, that's quite interesting as well to watch it as a YouTube video. They're advertising a special mix box for Easter. And here is art out of the box with Catherine. How to do video. So this is a little sort of step by step on what she's created. She's used a lot of the acrylic paint and she's used the marker on top. So that's good news because I was worried that we wouldn't be able to do that. And she's done that here because this is clearly the ochre ecoline pen in this darker area. Um, so she's taken, through, taken you through her creation step by step. This is very expressive and she's explaining what she's doing. And this was the entries for Upcrate 54. So this was the one with the oil pastels. I really enjoyed myself with that. And there's some lovely fruit here, look. <laughs> Pomegranate. Okay, Upcrate 55 topic, your magic. This month only you are in demand. Your magic on paper will give you two different ideas and you can give everything you've got artistically. Still life or portrait, your decision. Well, that's uh, interesting. Uh, use the supplies in the box, create the artwork and obviously deadline. Uh, if you are the winner, you can get the big box worth more than 80 euros. Your magic. Oh my. That's pretty open-ended. Not really into portraiture. This could be difficult. <laughs> anyway, that is us for the contents of the box. Now the best thing to do is get testing these supplies. Now, given that they haven't provided us with a paintbrush in the box, that gives us a bit of artistic license um, to use whichever kind of brush we would like to create different shapes and strokes. I'm just getting some clean water here so that we can test out this set uh, of yellow paint. I actually, I keep a jar of clean water at my desk all the time now. Who'd have thunk it considering, I, you know, I'm not a painter, but there you go. The lid is there because we don't want Pippi here or Jock here. Um, two collies currently casting their coats. Not a good combination. So let's start with this acrylic paint because I want to do a big chunk um, to see how quickly it dries and obviously to see if we can do things over the top. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this paper in half-ish. Not, not really half but close enough. Um, because I'd like to test out on both sides of the paper. So I'm going to keep the rough side on my left and the smooth side on my right. And uh, we'll, we'll do a bit of double testing here just so that we can see what it looks like. So I've chosen a flat brush for testing because obviously that gives us a nice big wide swipe. And I've just got a little rag here so that I can take off any excess water, etc. This is such a vibrant colour, it's lovely. Take it neat first. Ooh. I see I'm going to do quite a big block here because I want to see what we can do over the top of it. So we can see there as well with a slightly drier brush we are getting paper texture and this is lovely because of the light balance in the camera that's showing up it's glowing like crazy it's not quite that vibrant um it is a little bit more demure than that oh it feels so nice on the smooth side like oh that's yeah it is going down quite smoothly i'm able to brush it out and get rid of my brush strokes fairly easily and um, which is always nice with acrylic paint considering this is supposed to be quite a heavy bodied paint so the other thing i want to do is like leave a few blobs and see if we can build up some some texture but also i would like to see what this is like slightly watered down because we can water down acrylic paint. You don't want to be doing it too much because it does sort of compromise the integrity of the paint. Um, but it can be done. And that's not really made that much of a difference. Oh, it's, it's, yeah, okay. Let's see. 
yeah, so we, we can uh, we can use it in a slightly diluted form, which might be quite nice um, if you wanted to use your Ecoline markers over the top. But that's such a vibrant colour. That's a fun colour. I like that. Okay. Ah, right, while that's drying, I'm going to prime this marker. So we want to give it a good shake so the little ball bearing mixes the paint. Because one of the things that happens, and it happens with most uh, most paints if they're sitting, um, they do start to split and that's perfectly normal. Um, but the whole point is it's easy to put it back together. Okay, so now that we've given it a good shake, um, this tip depresses in like this. So what we want to do is tip this pen on its end and press down on paper to let the paint flow down and eventually it'll soak through into the nib and that's us ready to go. You can see that starting to flow down now, starting to soak into the nib. There we go, and that is us, we are good to go, wow. Oh, it's a big boy. That's on the rough paper, so you can see I didn't get a very good line there. Um, on the smoother paper, it's a little bit better. Now, because we've got this big square end, you know, we've got lots of line widths that we can use. Um, you know, you can use it on its side or on a corner or, you know, anything like that. So you've got quite a bit of variety going on there. But that is super opaque, super juicy. Um, I'm quite happy with that. I would actually like that to fill in. I've, I've got an obsession with black backgrounds, but that I might actually use that um, out with, you know, the box situation. Like These pens are so pretty. They're not something I would use. Most of you that are regulars here will know I'm not much of a pen or marker person. Um, I, I tend to be pencil or paint, but these are nice, you know, and just because I don't use something doesn't mean that I think it's rubbish. It's just not something that's... Uh, you know, in my wheelhouse. So these, the brushes on these are so nice. Like they really, really are. And they're quite versatile as well. So you can see there, we've got a nice bit of color and we can use these pens. I'm not much of a calligrapher. I don't, I don't have the patience for hand lettering. Um, and I'm always quite sort of envious and respectful of people that are, uh, but these pens are, are very, very versatile in that sense. So that was mahogany. This, I'm really enjoying this ochre color. And the texture of the rough side of the paper is coming through quite nicely. I'm going to zoom in a little bit there and see if you can see. Yeah, you can you can see it in these two quite clearly. You know, there's definite texture there. So that's going to give you a little bit of interest. These colours are so nice together. Ooh, it's very delicate. I would be reluctant to use these a lot on rougher paper um, just because I would want to try and preserve this brush tip because what happens eventually is these fibres start to free a little bit um, and then you end up with a hairy brush tip which uh, is not, not ideal. It's like a, almost like a mushroom colour. What colour is this supposed to be? Pink beige, okay. This one feels quite watery compared to the other ones. I know obviously it's a, it's a much more desaturated colour, but it feels quite wet coming out of the out of the, the tube, you know, like as if there's almost too much ink. That's a nice grey as well, okay. Yep, definitely feel more comfortable using the the markers on the, the smoother side. I think we have to go carefully if we're going to use the rougher paper. But the other thing I wanted to demonstrate with this is what happens when we dilute this out with water. So for the inevitable question that always comes up every time I whip these out, these are the Kuritake Zig H2O water brushes. I use them all the time. Um, I've stuck with these more or less since the beginning. I have tried other water brushes. I just seem to get on well with the control of the water. Um, so if you like these, they're available on Amazon. You can buy them in a pack of four and they're not too expensive. Second choice is the Pentel water brushes. I always say that as well. Okay, um, so what I wanted to show you here is what happens when we do dilute this out. Now, if my memory serves me correctly, it's best to do this quickly while it's still wet. Um, it's much more difficult to dilute out once that ink has started to dry on the paper. But look at that, we've gone from a really intense colour down to a very delicate pink colour. Um, not dissimilar to the saturation that's going on down here with the actual more delicate colours. So that is a lot easier on the smooth paper. Um, I don't know how we're going to get on here, but let's try. Yep, so again, the texture of the paper's coming into play, but look at that, that looks lovely. That is really, really nice. And you can do that with all of these. Obviously, the lighter the colour, uh, the less dilution you're going to want, because if you do use a lot of water with a colour like this, you're going to end up with hardly anything on the paper. Um, let's just uh, let's just have a little go, because this is a very, very desaturated colour to begin with. Yeah, so like I'm diluting it, it's like nothing's happening. Uh, struggling a little bit more with that one on the the rough side of the paper. So that's what we're looking like. You can also mix these as well. Um, if you've got like a, a palette to hand, you can squeeze them into 
a well in your palette and mix the colours together. I would, if you're going to mix colours, I would recommend that you do it in a palette and not on the paper, just to give yourself plenty of time. So for example, if I uh, stick a bit of this in here, and then a little bit of my, my ochre, I'm squeaking away, there's been a long time since I've done that. So we can lift a little bit of this mahogany and mix it in with the ochre and that's going to give you something else. So we're almost into like a burnt orange there. And obviously again you can build that up and um, you can spend a bit of time messing about with the combinations and find something that you think is cool or is going to fit in with your artwork. You can also layer them up on the paper as well, that's another option and that will give you a slightly different hue. So again we could go back over this here. And again, I would say this is significantly easier. I've got a little bit of fluff there. I don't know what that's off of. This is significantly easier for me personally on here because I'm far less likely to ruin my pens. If anybody is a user of these regularly, I would love to hear in the comments how you find the integrity of the brush. Um, you know, are, are they quite robust or do you find that you have to be very gentle with them again not being a person that uses things like this i can't really comment on it but i would love to hear your thoughts because i know there are some of you out there that do use these in this particular brand yeah so you can layer your colors up as well because they're kind of like semi-transparent you've got the ability to create different colors and you can see that the artist has done this in the featured artwork and has layered up greys and the ochres and things and it just adds a bit of interest to whatever it is you're doing as well lastly we've got this little um we've got this little pigma micron and again on the smooth paper this is going to be a dream these are so reliable and they're really cost effective especially if you buy them in a pack i would say that if you are a person who maybe doesn't use ink very often um, and only uses them occasionally like me buying a pack with the different sizes is really handy if you're like looking to build up, you know, maybe you're newer to art, these are a great staple to have and they're cheap. And especially with the bigger nibs, you can fill in an area fairly quickly. Now again, the, the texture of this paper is lines that run down the way. I think you can see that quite clearly there. So if you were going to fill in an area, you'd probably have to take a bit more care. And I would go with the grain um, just again to sort of preserve your nib a little bit. These thicker nibs are okay but with the smaller ones I mentioned I use the really tiny 003s and um, those nibs are so delicate and you do have to be careful with them but a lot of that is to do with the fact that they're absolutely minuscule. <laughs> I've got one here, This, these are the ones that I like to use so let's just do a wee comparison here. So this is the one that's come in the box and uh, this is the one that Gem Gem uses. <laughs> Not much difference, so you can see why they're they're very delicate. Um, but I absolutely love them. I think it's because it's very close to having like a sharp pencil. I think that's why I enjoy using them because I, I always tend to lean towards pencil. So this is what we've got. This is still a wee bitty wet here. I don't know if you can see that, um, just that wee corner. Everything else is pretty dry. It is a, a very average room temperature in the cave today. So um, I would say that this is pretty standard drying times. We've not had to wait too long which is nice. So what I want to do now is just see what happens when we layer things up. There's no point in putting the eco line markers over the top of this acrylic paint because you're not going to see it. Um, but with the paler colour, as demonstrated by our featured artist, we can go on the top of that. I want to try on the thicker paint as well though. That's dry too. Um, just to see how it sits. Right, okay. So... If I zoom right in there, you can see there's these funny little lines and it's basically because obviously the acrylic paint has acrylic in it so it's creating a sort of resist um, and if I go like that it's going to smudge off. However, that first part's quite dry and I'm running my finger over it and it's staying put so we can use them over the top but we just have to be careful to make sure that it's absolutely dry and I actually love this colour on top of that yellow um, that's really really nice, it's almost gone like a peachy colour hasn't it? If I just take the micron again as well, uh, we are able to use that over the top of everything so there's the lumpy bumpy paint, <laughs> here's the thick paint and here is the diluted paint. So with this, especially with the thick acrylic, you have to give this ink time to dry. Um, that will smudge. So you have to absolutely leave it alone and give it a little while so that it is absolutely fully and utterly solid. But the other thing as well is if we leave this to dry, we can use these pens with water over the top of them. And again, it's the same thing. If you do it too early, it will 
it will smudge but if you give it the proper drying time because sometimes I, again it depends how you like to work but I quite often like to line my sketch and then paint as if I was like colouring in a colouring book and you're able to do that with the Pigma Microns as long as you give the correct drying time so if I just when we're talking about opacity there we go can you see the smudge that we've got there it's picked up some of the Micron because it's not dry enough but you can see obviously that you're able to go over the top of it so we'll let this side dry for a little while longer and then I'll do this again on this side and you'll see that it won't smudge anything. Quite an interesting set of colours. We're being railroaded into either a portrait or a still life and the prompt is your magic. This is one of these prompts where I think it's like it's almost too vague. Um, although they've pointed you in a direction of what you know of what format they want it painted in. Um, right now in my mind this isn't really helping me honestly. So I'm not entirely sure what I want to do about that. My other thought that I just had as well is we can mix some of the black acrylic with the yellow. When we're doing stuff like this, when you're using black, you have to be, it's like minimal amounts of black. We were talking about it being heavy bodied and it is sitting in a peak <laughs> in my palette there. So it's definitely doing that. Let's give this a wee wash off. I'll take the tiniest bit of black, like boop and we can mix that in. That's given us almost like an, an olive colour, like we've lent into like a kind of greenish colour, which is nice as well, but you just have to go easy with that. The other good thing to do when you do things like this is wait until the paint is dry. Acrylic paint is one of those things that sometimes dries a slightly different colour than when it's wet. So if you're gonna test stuff like that out, it's a good idea to, to wait a bit too. Got a lot of waiting involved here. All right, so I've given this a wee bit of drying time now. So I'm going to go back with one of these lighter colours. I'll do it on the rough paper, so this left hand side here. Um, so this was just to demonstrate with the Micron. <sighs> okay, that was not supposed to happen. It's been about half an hour um, since since I did this and it's still smudged the... It's still smudged the Micron. Okay, so you might have to leave it longer than that. Well, isn't this interesting? Oh my goodness, that's funny. Consummate professional here at the cave. I just want to see what happens. If you're going to do your, your artworks in one sitting, I would now not advise to use your Micron and then use these pens over the top. Good grief. Okay, well, Gem Gem has learned a lesson today. So there you go. That is the March upgrade box number 55 we've got quite an exciting range of supplies this green has dried beautifully and I, I'm, I'm feeling it because I, I like green I'm not feeling the prompt though uh, I don't know if I'm going to do anything with it truthfully in terms of the actual box itself this is a really nice set of supplies and not something that I would have necessarily put together uh, had it been me. But this is the beauty of Upcrate. Sometimes they do stuff like this and it doesn't work. And sometimes they do stuff like this and it absolutely 100% does work. So I think they've done a really good job in the box. And, uh, you know, it, it's a way for people to get a bit more creative and a bit more adventurous um, especially people like me who tend to stick quite rigidly to pencil and paint so I, I think we could have a lot of fun with this I may do an artwork with this but not necessarily linked to the prompt um, I have to the, the, this colour scheme is not conglomerating in my brain and spitting anything out and that's usually what happens with me and I, I, I'm not there yet so I'm, I'm going to take some time I, again if I do do an artwork with this I will post it online but I can't promise that we are at that time of the year here as well uh, our cows have started calving so this becomes very busy very quickly and things like this tend to fall by the wayside but 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 what I would like to say is um overall I am I am happy with this box it's great the ecoline markers I will not be keeping because it's just something I don't use so they will head into the stash shop eventually but overall I think this is a great box I'm really glad, glad that they've given us plenty of paper uh, six seven eight nine uh, ten sheets there uh, but that gives you plenty to get on with to practice if you want to try both sides honestly there's not a huge amount of difference and still until you start diluting out your paint and um, that's the place where it's really obvious that the you know the textured versus the smooth side but even in the markers there isn't that much of a difference again I'll maybe zoom in and just see if we can um, have this a little bit closer you can see the texture of the paper through the marker but it's not 
I, I, it's not really that extreme. I would say that using the smoother side is kinder to your markers, but in terms of the actual markers themselves and how they're going down on the paper, if you're at a distance, if I zoom back out a little bit, uh, there's really not that much of a visual difference. It's a different story for the paint, however, and that's obviously an advantage to have that you can use both sides of the paper. So that is it for today guys. I want to thank you very much for watching. Thanks for coming and hanging out. You know I always appreciate it. And as always I would love to hear your thoughts on this box. Whether you're excited about the Ecoline pens and adding them to your collection or whether you are a little bit on the fence about these supplies uh, as i said the the supplies i think are great it's the prompt that's kind of making me go eh but uh, can't please everyone all the time so overall good job upcrate and i'm sure many of you will be creating some fabulous artworks with these supplies have a great day everyone bye bye for now